Welcome to My Creative Corner 3, a podcast about my quilting journey and life in a northern town. Show notes can be found at mycreativecorner3.wordpress.com. Please leave a comment and we can continue the conversation online. My name is Vicki. Welcome to the podcast. Today is Monday, December 18th, and it is exactly one week to Christmas Day. I do want to say that it's been a weekend of Christmas activities, of putting up the tree and wrapping gifts and shipping those that need to be mailed out. And I really feel the spirit of the season. Now, if you don't celebrate Christmas, that's okay. We're going to talk more about meditative quilting, but I do want to say I'm very much enjoying a Advent series by Emily P. Freeman that I purchased, and she has a weekly free podcast called The Next Step. Really enjoy it and would highly recommend it for those seeking some quiet, meditative space in their days, which I'm always looking for. Um, You know, I'm at a point in my life where I need those quiet meditative spaces and that's really what got me started in quilting all those years ago. You know being a working mom and having a busy social life with kids and being married we are all busy with activities but now that I'm in the empty nest I'm finding I have more time to tend those areas that I didn't have time for when I was younger and one of them is my own time of meditation and self-care and I kind of need to make up for lost time. In the series there's really a lot of great messages about peace, hope, and joy and what I got thinking about is meditation. What is meditation to me? It sometimes is lots of forms. I sit in a chair, breathe deeply, close my eyes, listen to some really Um, boring electronic music so that I can think of all the positive things for the day and breathe in and out and let those things that aren't positive go but really I can find times in each day that is meditative in fact that's what quilting is all about for me when I get on the long arm I quote get in the zone I can be doing um, a very collage style quilt free motions why I do free motion it's pretty stress free for me um, after I've got lots of practice in and I can just let the ideas flow and really find myself um, being very very comfortable and and relaxed while I'm quilting I can do the same piecing and doing Zen tangle drawings where sometimes it's about the repetitive nature of what you're doing Uh, When I get to other parts where it's more problem solving and design oriented and measuring and cutting, that's not as meditative, even though it has its creative process that's very helpful. But that's why I like to have two setups, one machine for quilting and the other for piecing. And when I'm quilting is when I find myself in a very meditative state. The repetitive nature of what I'm doing, I can get very relaxed. My mind is very free and it's happy it's open to receiving messages from the universe as well as really insights to from myself through life now if you want to achieve that without having to have a long arm setting or maybe you don't have time in the day angela walters just put out a video and it was my meditative moment i couldn't believe it she did 13 minutes on a YouTube video called Just Machine Quilting. And she did collage style quiltings of swirl, paisley leaves, pebbles, and some other features. And it was like the best 13 minutes of instruction I've ever had online. There was no talking. Uh, I don't even know that there's music. It was just the machine. And I think this is going to be my new go-to meditative moment when I have a busy day. I'm just going to pop that YouTube video in and it just takes me right to my machine and that free, relaxing, meditative moment. And of course, Angela is a master at what she does. And I am one of her biggest fans. And this is 
the best video, in my humble opinion, about free motion quilting. I wish I knew the secret to her camera setup because I absolutely love this video. I have to do, say the other parts of meditation is really sometimes a quicker version of this, you know, where you're having a busy day and you just need to stop for two seconds, take a deep breath, maybe walk outside, maybe walk around and then come back to what you're doing. Sometimes it's just closing your eyes in your chair, counting to 10 and then going on, you know, meditating moments is really what you want it to be. I wish I had more time to spend, you know, like, I don't know, an hour or so a day doing this, but I really don't have that much time meditative moments for me can also be when I'm exercising and on a treadmill or an elliptical trainer or when it's nice outside walking because you really are just focusing on what you're doing and then once you get going on that you know what your body needs to do it becomes repetitive and you can do other things with your mind while you're exercising and still not lose any really any level of your workout you can still work out hard that's what I'm trying to say at least that's what I do and it also makes it so it's less painful while you're riding a bike to nowhere or walking miles and miles to nowhere and the elliptical trainer is just brutal for me but anyway so exercising also helps because I think when I'm exercising and I have my heart pumping real hard then I can also come up with ideas and really really think about you know maybe something new I want to do as well as meditating on these positive things that I'm doing for myself for my body things that are going on in my life I meditate on the joys the peace the happiness and the hope those are kind of the four main themes of what I meditate on while I'm doing things and that brings us back full circle to the podcast that I mentioned at the beginning so Christmas is here. I am finally feeling, quote, the Christmas spirit. I didn't um, put my tree up before this because we never do. Lest you all think that I'm having problems because we put our tree up on the, what, the 17th of December. We never do. It's been one of those compromises. Let's talk about families here for a minute. You know, holiday season is about family time. Uh, my husband grew up in a family where they always bought real trees, and you didn't put them up till right before Christmas because up here the tree would die because the house has wood heat or it's so dry because it's been very cold and it's pretty typical of December to be a high of 10. Um, that's how it's been the last week. I grew up in a family where we bought artificial trees because um, I am highly allergic to pine trees and the, the pollen and the saps and all that goes with the pine tree and we put the tree up early so our rule which is really not written down but it's kind of my rule is it the tree goes up after my husband's birthday but comes down before my son's birthday which happens to correspond with parts of you know advent so i put we put the trip usually a week before christmas and it comes down usually by the 7th or 10th of january somewhere in that ballpark depending on um, my activities i've also made it very intentional not to overdo this holiday season and this isn't just a Christmas chat so let's talk about life you know when we get to times where we feel like people have a lot of expectation like birthdays holidays you know events in life it's easy to think that I need to do everything and I don't know if you're like that but that's me so I made sure that this year I didn't do ridiculous things that I have no business doing like baking a billion cookies I don't need to eat them um, I'm really working on eating healthy, so is my family, but collectively, I have a friend who loves baking, and it is meditative for her and relaxing, and she shared, why would I need to make more, because she gave me the gift of time, of not having to make all of those, and she's very good at it, they were delicious, we had it, had them while they were fresh and enjoyed them 
And I'm not going to overdo on the meal. I'm not the person who does the most cooking. That would be my husband for the holidays. And we're going to do things like, you know, maybe buy frozen pies. I, I don't know if I'll have time. I won't have time to make all of these things by scratch, from scratch. Let the pressure off. What is the really big deal? Well, it was a big deal to no one else but me, thinking that I had to do it all. I had to make it from scratch because my grandma did. I had to make lots of cookies because someone else did, because it was expected. Having the decor up by Halloween for Christmas and having it all be matchy-matchy and themed and bows and ribbons and trim that all coordinated and told a curated story. I really used to think that that was my job to do that, even when I was very young. And I really let all that go in the last few years and go, you know what, this is telling my story, my ornaments that are all hodgepodge. Because I have everything from a beautiful um, collection of ornaments from Bronner's and Frankenmuth of Santa's to Sasquatch to the Angels to it's a whimsical, eclectic collection of ornaments just like me and my house and I'm like you know what the rest of that just let it go no one else cares but me I um, also realized that that's why there's so many people that do so many things and when we come together and share over the season and the holidays in at Christmas we share our talents and gifts some people share the cooking, some people share the gift giving, and some people share a beautifully coordinated and decorated home. And usually that it all comes together. And if I really pay attention, I experience everything that I could possibly want during the holidays if I reach out and attend things in the community, like maybe a community choir or go to church on our special services, go see special light shows, I don't have to create that all myself. Leave home and experience it. It's fun to experience some of it online too, but I highly recommend that we also unplug and go out in the community and be with other people and experience it as a collective audience. It's really super so much fun. I hope over the week I have off of work to take in the new Star Wars movie, maybe a sporting event, um, visit family, friends, and really extend that joy and meditative piece of the holiday with a break from work through the first of the year. So to celebrate all of that, I decided that I am doing a quilt along on my blog. And that's a word, my creative corner three, three is a number, dot wordpress.com. And on my Facebook group, my creative corner three, I started with the fabric suggestions. Um, I'll talk about it here a little bit because I can't do math in my head. And when I start typing, um, I make a lot of mistakes. But really and truly, I counted how many fat quarters I used in the quilt. And it's about 15. And they need to be divided into thirds. A third of them need to read strongly as a light a medium and a dark or the blocks could get mushy now if you want to do a low volume quilt in your experience quilter that's great this whole um, sampler it is a sampler is a skill building sampler to help people learn how to quilt and achieve accuracy and try something new as sometimes as a group is so much fun to share so we're going to be posting pictures those who choose to do this sampler on my Facebook group of my Creative Corner 3. This is going to be a lot of fun. So you need 15 fat quarters in light, mediums, and darks. You also need about two yards of a focal fabric that will be in a connector block. It will not be sashed and there will not be um, a border on it. Now if you want to put a border on it, that's fine. But two yards of that beautiful fabric that's going to be a real bright pop of color and then I had half a yard of black also. 
Now I've done this in a full, a full quilt in red, black, gray, and white in that collection. And I also did one in white, blues, and yellows. Um, it's beautiful in any colorway and it would be fabulous as a scrappy quilt. So you can do your quilt on our quilt along however you want. It could be anything and it'll be beautiful. The first block will be published on the blog this week. And then after the first of the year, I'm hoping on Wednesdays will be a good day for me. There's 15 blocks in the series. So once a week until the quilt is all released. Um, on the last day, we'll also give instructions on how to put it together. And then in the end of that, after a couple of weeks, I'll release how I quilted it. And I'm planning on quilting it um, more of a collage style quilt but you know I could change my mind a hundred times between now and then um, and it will also depend on my long arming customer base and, and where I'm at with all of that so the quilt along is going to be a lot of fun and it's free all you have to do is you know go to the blog once a week uh, if you want to subscribe to my blog you can get a uh, emails on all the posts and you won't miss anything you could also join the facebook group and i'll be posting links in there too i did put the group from public to a closed group because um i just think it'll be more fun that way and we can share more and not feel that all of our stuff is out on the universe's news feeds and um, we're going to continue with some creative prompt challenges also. Um, I haven't figured out what we want to do for the prompt challenges the first of the year, but, you know, I got lots of time to meditate on those particular items. So I'll put links in the show notes for the quilt along as well as the other things that I mentioned, including the podcast that I love the next right thing, the next thing, and Angela Walter's fabulous video that I find incredibly meditative. What kinds of things do you find meditative? I'd really like to know. Um, driving a car in a familiar path, um, when I used to com commute an hour a day, that could be very meditative because I didn't have traffic to contend with. I could put music in and just really have an hour of transition time from home to work, work to home. I found that really a necessary part of my life when I was doing commuting, except um, the weather could ruin that and make it very stressful. What else could you do you find helpful? I'd love to hear about it in the um, comments. Um, I really would enjoy to hear all about your commenting on this on the blog. It would be great. Uh, I also do, you know, some videos on my YouTube channel, so it would be great to see people like and subscribe to those. And I would like to end by extending an invitation for anyone who enjoys the blog to to become a patron and even if it's a one-time gift um, you can find that link on the Podbean or on my blog there are links there uh, I really am thankful to those who have chosen to become patrons because it really does help me in production as well as the cost of maintaining this podcast I'm also hoping that in the next few weeks that I can upgrade my web page and it will include my blog to have a PayPal button and I have uh, several patterns that I really would like to sell and I think there are some that are really adorable and cute and I'm going to also say none of them have applique because that is not my strength and um, the one is a paper piece pattern and I have some that I've designed over the last few years that I think are still real relevant and that people have asked me about them in the past. So watch for that um, upgrade coming to my website. Again, I want to thank everyone for returning back and listening to the podcast. And to all of those who celebrate Christmas, I would like to wish you all a very, very deep, meaningful Merry Christmas. And to the rest of my readers, listeners and supporters I want to say 
Happy New Year. Enjoy the moment of the day, everyone, and really meditate upon those things that bring you joy, peace, and hope for the new year.